welcome parents to the 2020-21 Ashwaubenon High School Whole Curricular Code Meeting. I'm Nick Sanger, Activities Director and Associate Principal. I always like to start this meeting with a message. And this year, the message is certainly a little bit different um, with uh, the lack of our fall sports in the fall season. But this still rings true every time I uh, share this with parents. Your child's success or lack of success in sports does not indicate what kind of parent you are. But having an athlete that is coachable, respectful, a great teammate, mentally tough, resilient, and tries their best can be a reflection of your parenting. I want you to think about that as we go through this uh, presentation and you watch this with your son or daughter. Sports are important. We know that. I love sports. I love watching kids compete. I love providing that opportunity. Um, it means a lot to kids. It means a lot to our school. But remember to keep that in perspective uh, as we go through um, the next four years of your son or daughter's involvement in uh, co-curriculars. This presentation typically in person is uh, 45 minutes to an hour. I don't anticipate this meeting lasting that long uh, virtually, uh, but if you have any questions uh, throughout, certainly email me or give me a phone call. I always ask this, why do you want your son or daughter to play high school sports? What do you expect? What do you want? And uh, I'll pause for a second and give you some time to think about that. Um, but I too am a parent of a freshman this year that's going to be involved. And I think, what do I want them to get out of their high school experience? What do I want them to get out of uh, participation? Respect, hard work, adversity, being on time, discipline, perseverance, accountability, humility, having fun, learning, of course, commitment, learning a role, teamwork, dedication, skill, selflessness, not selfishness, are oftentimes what parents give us, right? It's also what kids often, often give when I ask them. Notice what's not up there. Notice what I don't see. It's certainly important, it's certainly what we strive for, but it's not what we typically get as answers, our first answers. These are the answers we get. We don't get the answer winning. Winning is important. Competing is important. Trying your best is important. Do we want to win? Absolutely. That's why we play the game. That's why we play games. We want to win. Um, but it's not a win at all cost mentality. It's a win learning these skills. Take some time. Uh, click on this link. Uh, I want you to watch this video. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Um, you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. But at the end of the day, let your kid experience high school sports. Don't put all your eggs in that basket where you think your son or daughter is going to be a, a college-bound Division I athlete. Certainly, we have a couple come through here. Um, it's exciting when we have that skill set and that uh, the student athlete is able to achieve that. Uh, if you want to play high, uh, college sports, absolutely go after it. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to help you achieve that dream. Uh, but it's far and few between that uh, earn uh, that college scholarship, a Division I scholarship. I wish you well. We will work hard to get there with all our kids. Uh, but parents, keep it in perspective. I always go back to keep it in perspective. A couple of uh, notes. We're part of the Fox River Classic Conference. Uh, these are the teams we'll see in our conference. Uh, Bayport, De Pere, Preble, Southwest, Manitowoc, Notre Dame, Pulaski, Sheboygan North, and Sheboygan South. Uh, for football, we do have um, a couple other schools, uh, West of Pier and Menasha. So once in a while, Green Bay West, Green Bay East. Once in a while, we'll cross paths uh, with those schools for football. We have a great partnership with Prevea Sports Medicine. Uh, they do a wonderful job serving our student athletes. Um, we rely on them to give, uh, to give us their advice. We rely on them when we have injuries. Our trainers are typically at uh, all our practices uh, and at all our games. Aaron Pelle is a licensed athletic trainer. He's here every day, 2.30 to 5.30. He's got office hours. He's got an email address. Megan is no longer with us. Um, she took another position uh, out east, um, but she, she was awesome as well. Um, typically, Prevea provides us uh, two trainers, uh, certainly during the busy season. So I expect that uh, we'll have two again this year. 
very important in um, with Provea is that all your sons and daughters, if they're involved in a sport, are going to take an impact test for a baseline uh, for concussion. We take concussions very seriously. We take head injuries very seriously. We take all injury, injuries very seriously. We want your son or daughter to be on the field competing or on the court in the pool um, or wherever their, their venue is, the rink. Uh, but their safety is uh, important. Uh, injuries happen. Um, there is a risk to playing. Uh, uh, that risk could lead be paral being paralyzed or um, uh, having a head injury, uh, even up to, uh, God forbid, but uh, the risk of death uh, in, in our sports. Uh, we do everything we can to mitigate. We do everything we can to keep your sons or daughters safe. Our coaches teach the right way. Our coaches teach best practice. Um, but know that injuries do happen. Um, the baseline impact test is something a uh, physician would use as a tool uh, before returning your son or daughter uh, back onto the field of play or the court of play. So uh, every uh, one of our student athletes will take an impact test and the, our physicians and our trainers will use that as one of the tools uh, before your son or daughter is cleared back for play. Um, if there's a head injury ever, our WIA, Wisconsin Interscholastic Athletic Association, does have con uh, concussion insurance. It's called Headstrong. Uh, the insurance will pay for covered charges after the primary insurance has been exhausted. Uh, it's also referred to as a secondary policy um, that will pay that uh, additional cost. All you have to do is if, if there's additional cost uh, past your primary care, uh, primary insurance, is uh, touch base with me and we'll fill out some paperwork uh, and we'll make sure that uh, any head injury, concussion injury is taken care of. We also um, ask that all our student athletes are covered by insurance, a family plan of some sort. If uh, you need more information on having your son or daughter covered by a sport only plan, if you don't have insurance, uh, Sonny Henrick is our regional representative uh, who has Student Assurances uh, Services, Inc. There's his contact information. Uh, but if your son or daughter is involved in uh, co-curriculars at the high school athletics, um, there will be a spot where you have to enter that information uh, in when registering for uh, the season. Our schedules, our schedules do change periodically. Um, certainly this fall they have changed, but uh, during the course of the winter season, uh, during the course of a spring season, uh, those schedules change. Uh, the beginning of the year, your coach may give you a uh, schedule, but again, schedules change based on weather, based on availability of fields, and uh, even now uh, based on availability of officials. We're running into an official shortage. Um, so if you have a desire to get involved in high school athletics, uh, get certified to be a, a licensed uh, official, and I can put you to work, uh, whether that's baseball, softball, basketball, hockey, swim, you name it, there is a shortage of officials. Um, so get involved that way. But again, uh, go to our high school athletic pages, and you can uh, click on our schedules, and you will always see the most up-to-date schedule. We do have a Twitter feed that has a lot of information that we put out there. Uh, that's my Twitter feed. Uh, check it out if you want to follow uh, current events and current cool things happening at the high school, um, pictures, uh, excitement, um, athletics, and co-curricular activities. So you got to ask yourself, what's involved um, to participate? Uh, what do we need from you? What do we need from our students? Uh, number one is uh, paying attention to this meeting, participating in this meeting. Um, this year, uh, in lieu of an in-person meeting, we're doing a virtual meeting. And here we go. This is it. Uh, you can check that off the box of what you have to do. You have to have a current physical on file in our activity office. And I know this year there's a little bit of a uh, confusion uh, about uh, uh, extension of the um, physical. In talking with our local providers, Bell and Provea, Aurora, uh, they're open for business and they are taking uh, appointments for current uh, for physical exams. Uh, so make sure that you get that taken care of if yours is expired. Uh, and we will not allow you to participate until that physical exam is up to date uh, and in our hands um, and on uh, in our possession. If you say you had a physical, um, we're still going to say, hey, when was that physical? We need to see that physical 
uh, prior to um, we need to see it in our hands prior to that uh, first practice. Uh, and certainly, um, we're not going to let you participate in a practice or contest without that on file. Additionally, you need to have a co-curricular activity fee paid. Uh, it's thirty-five dollars. Uh, I think it is the best deal uh, to participate. Thirty-five dollars covers you for. Um, three or four sports every year. If you're involved in more than one sport, two sports, three sports, uh, even we've had kids participate in four sports, that $35 is going to cover you. Are there other expenses in that sport? Cleats, uh, rackets, uh, suits, uh, apparel, certainly. But $35 is our activity fee, uh, and that covers you. It's a steal. If you think about club sports, if you think about uh, AAU sports, if you think about all the other opportunities that are out there, $35 to play high school sports is absolutely a steal. Uh, we're going to make sure that we have that paid before um, that first contest. If there's any, uh, any of your uh, concerns about being able to pay that, uh, please contact our high school office and we'll uh, work with you to make sure that, uh, uh, that fees are paid. And uh, if we need to work with you to have a payment plan or uh, uh, waive the fee, certainly we don't want uh, any financial cost. Um, limiting or restricting anybody from participating. We want kids to participate uh, in multiple sports. I encourage all our kids to participate in more than one sport. Really, their freshman year, they should be playing two or three sports and involved in other activities and uh, offerings we have at the high school. You need to register online. Uh, the student athlete, you the parent, must read, review, agree to, and sign an online co-curricular contract each school year. Make sure you do this. Make sure you read the co-curricular code. It's on uh, our website. Um, a lot of times we'll get people that just uh, buzz through it. But you know what? I encourage you to read it, review it uh, before you agree to it. Co-curriculars are a privilege. Um, we offer these uh, every year. Uh, certainly we do, uh, but they're a privilege. Um, go on to our, our website. Uh, contract states the terms and rules of uh, regulations governing our activities. Uh, go to our web page uh, and you'll find yourself uh, able to, to register. Our philosophy. Co-curriculars are an extension of the classroom. They're an integral part of the curriculum and educational experience. That's why we offer them. Again, it's a pr privilege. And in you, it should elicit great pride. We're all GA Wars. The co-curricular activities provide a unique opportunity for our students to promote their mental, physical, social, and emotional development. So take advantage of them. We know there's a price tag to participation. That price tag is agreeing to doing the right thing, to, to being good people, to following the rules, uh, to not putting yourselves in positions where um, you're at a party, or you're out drinking, or vaping, or smoking, or uh, uh, vandalism, and all that kind of stuff that um, um, are out there. We're not naive. We know that those op uh, opportunities for kids are out there, but we always talk about making a good choice and uh, your commitment to a team. It's a privilege to participate, and there's consequences. Our mission here at the high school to provide a safe and caring environment that inspires all students to achieve their full potential. We talk about that as a coaching staff. We talk about that with our teachers. We talk about that with our coaches. We're going to push your kids. We're going to challenge your kids. We know that they are um, um, eager for that coaching, eager for that learning, and we want to inspire them. Uh, we know that coaches have a great impact on kids. Uh, so we. Uh, Encourage them to push, to challenge, and to uh, get the most out of your son or daughter. We're part of a team. And I've had our coaches read and I share with kids. Um, John Gordon, you'll see a lot of his uh, tweets if you're, if you're on Twitter. But John Gordon has a lot of good books. And uh, recently I read The Power of a Positive Team. In the very first paragraph, I'm just going to read it, um, makes a lot of sense to me. No one creates success alone. We all need a team to be successful. We are better together, and together we accomplish great things. 
teams publish a book like this. Teams win Super Bowls and championships. Teams launch rockets into outer space. Teams perform open heart surgery and find cures for diseases. Teams design, build, and sell automobiles, phones, computers, video games, software, homes, and the latest and greatest products. Teams create commercials, movies, songs, and advertisements. Teams educate children in schools and run nonprofits that feed the poor, heal the sick, shelter the homeless, and provide safe drinking water. Teams mobilize support for victims of natural disasters and help fight human trafficking. Teams work together to launch initiatives, companies, brands, products, and missions that change the world. We are a team here at AHS. We're a team of uh, basketball teams and football teams, musical teams, but our team is the big team. We look at the big picture. We're all a team, parents, teachers, coaches, administrators. This is our team for the next four years. So look around uh, to your teammates, look around to your classmates. This is our team, so let's take care of each other. We're looking for a lot of great attributes in kids. We talk to our players all the time in our organization. Just control the things you control. It's no different in life. Life's unfair. You're going to have things that happen to you. And we, you know, I try to balance football and life with our guys all the time. I talk to them after the game. You know, we responded. You know, 10% of life's what's happened to you. 90% is what you do about it. You got to respond in life. Things, things are going to go against you. That's part of it. So what? Now what? Yeah, the chemistry and the leadership of your team are the two most underrated things in football. You know, everybody just looks at them and they go, ooh, man, they're really talented. Oh, man, they got all these guys back or whatever it may be. And that's great, but it, the chemistry and leadership and morale, those are, those are very undervalued aspects that a lot of people don't think about. And um, – that really truly determine uh, the type of season that you're going to have. You know, you can't just be talented. Uh, there's a lot of talented teams out there that don't have they have underachieving seasons uh, because of those reasons. Maybe their chemistry is not very good. They're not a very selfless team. Uh, you know, their commitment's not what it needs to be. They're distracted. You know, they're looking at this and looking at that. You know, whatever it may be. Uh, Maybe they don't like each other very well. Uh, there, there's the leadership's not very good. The best players on your team, you know, uh, are, aren't the mo aren't committed like they need to be. And so it, it's I've been a part of of all of the above. Yeah, which foot to use as a pivot foot, and they're going to act like they're really good players. I'm tired of coaching a guy and having him roll his eyes or put his head down or feel sorry for himself. I'm tired of that. I mean, this is the this is big time. People lose their jobs. You know, they don't put their head down. They, they go get another job. Guys get sick. But they find a way to get healthy. You report to work. You report to duty. We got men and women serving our country. They don't get to take days off. You know, we're 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 going to college and getting it paid for. You know, Steph Curry show you that. I saw him in high school. He looked like a two year old out there, but the boy could shoot. And so, what did he do? He kept shooting. So if people think they're going to get it on the pillowcase, it's not going to happen. You can't nap your way to being a great shooter and Facebooking and all these things that teenagers do. You need to put the phones down, stop FaceTiming, stop tweeting, and get your butt in the gym. We put a huge premium on body language. And if your body language is bad, you will never get in the game. Ever. I don't, I don't care how good you are. If somebody says, well, you know, you just benched Stewie for, you know, 35 minutes in the Memphis game a couple of years ago. Yeah, I did. Oh, but I was to motivate her for the South Carolina game following Monday. No, it wasn't. Stewie was acting like a 12-year-old. So I put her on the bench and said, sit there. The other thing is that you're not going to get there alone. You know, be on a team. You know, be, surround yourself with good people and learn how to listen. It doesn't matter on our team. And the other coaches might say, well, you can do that because you got a three other, you know, All-Americans. Get that. I understand that. But I'd rather lose than watch kids play the way some kids play. Attitude comes first. We got to have guys who are going to believe in our mission. They're going to believe in what we want to do. Once they believe, then we can teach them the technique. 
um, it, it, that's, it all starts with our mindset. And we've got guys that are completely bought into what we do. There's no magic formula. No little secret potions you rub on your hands. Get your butt in the gym and practice. Period. End of story. And you can shoot like that too. A really great message from uh, all those coaches, uh, influential coaches. It really ring true in uh, what we want our kids to accomplish. Control the controllables, work hard, bust your tail, whether it's basketball or swim, soccer, you name it. Work hard and good things will happen and have a great attitude. Our number one job at uh, going to high school is your academics. We talk about academics being very important. Um, and when I get to this slide, I, I say to myself, man, a 1.5 on a 4.0 scale, every one of you can achieve the minimum. But don't shoot for the minimum. Shoot to, to do the best that you can. Shoot for 4.0 every semester. You control that by how hard you work. You control that by working with your teachers. You control that by taking advantage of academic help that is out there. There's no reason that we can't get good grades. We have academic focus every single day. The first couple of weeks, that might look a little different, um, but eventually we'll get back to where you can select a teacher to go get help. After school, our practices, there are no practices right now. But after school help is there. If you're in school on a green cohort or a yellow cohort day, you can get help from that teacher. You go into that classroom and say, I don't understand this math. I don't understand this history. I don't understand this, this language arts. You can get help. There's help during lunch. There's math and science help during lunch. You get a pass from a teacher. Again, there's no reason if you come to school, if you show up and you ask questions, that you can't achieve good grades. With these minimums, um, if you don't achieve this, if you have an app for have below 1.5 um, and or below 1.5, you'll be ineligible for some time. Uh, at the end of a quarter or at the beginning of uh, a, a next school year. If you need help, ask for it. I'm here, your counselors are here, your teachers are here, your coaches are here. They're gonna understand uh, why you need help if you need it, all right? They want you to get good grades too. You need to be at school. Attendance in school is a, is a must. If you're not at school, you can't participate that day. You can't participate in the next athletic competition if you're truant. Truant means you skipped on purpose. You're responsible for work that you missed if you're not here. If you leave school because you're sick and it happens, you can't come back to practice. Stay home. We don't want to get the rest of the team sick. If you're sick in the morning and you get here by the start of uh, third hour, which is about 11 o'clock or 11.10, you can practice that day. Uh, but don't make that a habit. I get it. Once in a while, we got a belly ache or a headache and you're sick. And, and by 11 o'clock, it clears up. Uh, but if you're sick, stay home. We want to keep the, the school safe. We want to keep your teammates healthy, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll get the sport. The sport will still be there when you return. Sometimes we get a question about PE. Our student athletes, uh, they should love PE, so make sure that uh, that doesn't um, get in the way of your sports. PE is important. Uh, you need one and a half credits of PE over the next four years, um, and you, you do need to participate. Sports don't take the place of physical education class. Co-curricular code of conduct expectations. Um, simply put, students are expected to follow all school rules and to display high standards of behavior, including good sportsmanship, respect for others, and the use of appropriate language and dress at all times. Possession, use, sale, transfer, distribution, or purchase of any controlled substance, intoxicant, drug, or drug paraphernalia. This includes, but is not limited to alcoholic beverages, illegal drugs, mood-altering mood substances, steroids, inhalants, prescribed medication used for the purpose other than prescribed, tobacco products, including vapor e-cigarettes. Those are all conduct violations. Um, 
lot of that's going to get you a, a citation from a police officer, a suspension from school um, if it's in school, and if you're a student athlete or involved in other co-curriculars, uh, suspension from those as well. Vape is a, a big thing. Uh, let's not uh, get caught um, using that. Uh, you shouldn't be using that. You need to be an adult to be using that. Uh, believe it or not, um, there are vape uh, devices that can blow up in your face, um, which is not a good thing. Um, believe it or not, um, we don't know the long-term effects of vape, but we need to know that one cartridge of vape is equal to uh, you know, a pack of cigarettes. Uh, you shouldn't be vaping. Parents, be on the lookout for vape uh, devices in the home. Um, there's a lot of examples of, of vape devices, and I'm going to show you a few here so you can see what they look like. Juice, so keep your eyes on the lookout for this if your son or daughter has a, a container like this. Might have some vape juice in it. They got names, they got flavors. Some of the bottles look like this that it comes in. Devices are very fancy as far as uh, deceptive. You know, this looks like a highlighter. Some of them look like uh, girl makeup devices. Some of them you plug right into your computer to charge. So keep your eyes on the lookout for those. Some of them look like little jump drives or compact compacts. Girls oftentimes keep that stuff in their uh, makeup bag. They keep their devices right in there. And if you ever see this in your son or daughter's uh, bag, know that that's uh, um, a jewel cartridge. And that's, uh, again, uh, of what's uh, in, in vape. So keep your eyes open, parents, uh, for uh, those uh, kids are able to order them online. Um, so just be diligent and uh, uh, make sure your kids know the risks and that it's a violation of our co-curricular code. Other violations, hosting, sponsoring, organizing, or attending a party gathering at which alcohol or drugs are being used, consumed, or offered is a violation. Any criminal uh, or violation of ordinance, village, city, or state, theft, uh, damage to property, other uh, things that the, the administration um, deems would be a violation um, could be considered a, a violation. A vandalism is also a violation. Discrimination, harassment, bullying, hazing, violence, aggression, or threatening behavior towards others. Hazing is unacceptable. It will not be tolerated. Hazing is when an upperclassman asks a younger classman to uh, do something that uh, um, to be involved in the sport, uh, tape you up to the uh, goalpost, um, uh, something in the locker room, uh, something where an upperclassman where you feel pressured to do something. Uh, knock on wood, my uh, seven years here at the high school, we haven't had to deal with that. Um, but I don't know unless I know. So. If you're a freshman and uh, an upperclassman asks you to do something that you're uncomfortable with, um, tell your coach, better yet, come tell me, uh, we're not gonna tolerate it. A representation of themselves or others inappropriately or unlawfully on the internet. Uh, this includes, but is not limited to blogs, profiles, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, et cetera. Parents, the cell phones are a big thing, I get that. And I tell our kids uh, at school that um, everything on their, uh, their phones, on their profiles, it's out there for employers to see. We're trying to get kids ready for a career, ready for the market, ready for um, to be employees. Uh, so their profile, their digital profile is out there. It doesn't disappear. It's always out there. Uh, so I encourage them to use it wisely. Uh, kids are kids. I get that. Um, but remember, their, their decisions uh, uh, could, on, on social media. Uh, could come back to haunt them if they don't uh, make good decisions. Kids make this bad decisions every now and again, uh, and there's consequences for that as it relates to the co-curricular code. Um, if there's a co-curricular code violation, um, it's 25% of your season. 
That's a lot of games. That's a lot of matches. Second offense, 50% of a season. A third offense uh, would be a suspension for one calendar year. A fourth offense, I, uh, we sit down, we have the conversation about, boy, I don't think co-curriculars are a good choice for you. Um, violations are cumulative. There is an honesty clause, so please come on in if you, your son or daughter makes a poor choice. Um, it, it, you have to own it. I always tell kids, own the own the mistake. Um, but it's uh, um, 365 days a year. Once you commit to being a student athlete or involved in co-curriculars, you're committing for 365 days a year. You don't take summers off. You don't take in-between seasons off. It's 365 days a year. If you have questions about the code, um, as you read it, please contact me uh, via email or phone. I'd be happy to uh, have that discussion and answer questions you or your son or daughter have. A few things for our parents here um, and our kids too. Um, if you're, we are a member of the WIAA, uh, so transferring schools at any time, there may uh, be some um, restrictions placed on you. Uh, if you transfer schools after your uh, junior year, an athlete must sit out. Uh, one calendar year. So if you're transferring after your uh, junior year, you're not going to play as a senior somewhere unless the family physically sells their house and moves. Uh, transferring schools after your sophomore year, uh, you'll be restricted to non-varsity opportunities for one calendar year. Uh, transferring after the start of your sophomore or junior year, you'll be restricted to non-varsity opportunities for one calendar year. If you transfer after your freshman year, uh, typically you're good to go. Uh, free and clear. We think we have a pretty good thing here. Um, we don't have a lot of kids transfer out. And we have a lot of kids transfer in for that matter. Uh, so uh, I know there's a big school up north, Bayport, I think it's called. Um, uh, we think we offer everything as good as them, if not better. And, and I know people come here to Bayport all the time. Out of season stuff. Our coaches cannot mandate participation in out of season activities. Uh, coaches are limited to the number of contact days they have with student athletes in the summer. Uh, and the WI certainly promotes uh, sportsmanship by all athletes, coaches, and spectators all the time. It's a point of emphasis we have with kids. It's a point of emphasis I have with parents, uh, spectators. Uh, it's an educational uh, environment. It's an extension of the classroom. We want to win. I get that. We do it the right way. Uh, we treat officials re with respect. We treat our players with respect. We treat our opponents with respect uh, because at the end of the day, it's a game. And we're teaching, uh, we're teaching a, a game. We're teaching life lessons within that game. So remember that. Cheer for our team, not against the opponent. Be respectful of fellow students, support staff, teachers, officials. Uh, view the game with your head instead of your heart. Remember that it's a game. Practice the golden rule. A, a good relationship with you parents is vital. That's what makes uh, our, our co-curriculars a success. With that being said, it's a, a, a responsibility of you parents to understand that uh, th this is a privilege to participate. There's no inherent right to be involved in co-curriculars. And our coaches, our advisors determine who participates and how much. At the freshman level, we want to get all the kids in. It's not always easy. If they're coming to practice, if they got the good grades, we can do everything we can to get them in the game, the match, the meet. JV level, we start to sift and sort a little bit. Some kids play more. And at the varsity level, our coaches are balancing uh, being successful on the field or the court or in the pool or uh, the rink uh, with having valuable uh, members of our team that may or may not play that much. Um, I have a conversation with our coaches uh, every year, to make sure that the kids know what their role is on the team and that th those kids can explain that role to their parents. Parents, understand that we're entrusting our coach and advisor to make good decisions in the best interest of the team and, and know all the kids involved in that activity. Let's not approach our coach right after a game or a contest. If you really want to meet with a, par with a coach, parents, schedule a time. Shoot them an email. Say, hey, is there a time we can meet? But really, you need to ask yourself, as your child, does your child have an issue with the coach? Is there an issue your child has not resolved? I encourage you to ask your son or daughter, have you addressed that with the coach? 
know that we go through a chain of command just like any place of business or places that you work. It's not to stall a complaint. It's to help teach our sons and daughters uh, to learn to have that conversation with an adult and to, to have, help them take it, um, uh, help them uh, make uh, good decisions and have that conversation. Parents, if you want to be part of that, I encourage you to be a part of that. Let your son or daughter do the talking. If it's not an issue for your son or daughter, then it's probably not an issue worth having uh, as a parent to have with a coach. Ask your son or daughter, what did the coach say? Parents, we're not going to accept making derogatory comments about coaches, officials, players, or others. We'll ask you to leave. We're not going to accept swearing at our events. We'll ask you to leave. Um, if you attend under the influence of alcohol or other drugs, we'll ask you to leave. Being offensive, yelling at officials, um, yelling at our team bench, yelling at uh, your kid, yelling at the other team's bench. We're not going to accept that. We'll ask you to leave. And uh, at times that can be embarrassing. I think it's more embarrassing uh, as a parent if you're asked to leave um, than uh, being respectful and doing the right thing. Parents, I encourage you to go click on this uh, uh, and watch this video. Um, at the end of the day, our, our, our kids play for coaches in sports and they work for bosses in the real world. We may not always agree or like a coach's decisions, um, but it's their decision and they're looking out for the best interests of the team. In the real world, we have bosses and we answer to our bosses. Uh, my mom, my dad have never come into my place of work and had a conversation with my boss. My mom, my dad have never called a coach. I played a long time ago, um, but they never called the coach. They trusted our coaches to make the best decision for our teams. And uh, I ask you to, to make sure that uh, you have that same trust for our coaches. Be positive, parents. Let your kids experience athletics and co-curriculars. In the United States, there's over 8 million high school athletes. A small percentage of them go on to play college athletics. Only 2% of them get a scholarship. That's a very small number of kids. Do we want kids to achieve that? Yes. Last year at this high school, students earned $1.5 million in academic scholarships. Last year, we had maybe two or three athletic scholarships. Kids at this school earned academic scholarships to the tune of $1.5 million. Hit the books, study hard. You're more likely to get academic scholarships than athletic scholarships. Parents, don't be little teammates or coaches in the stands, in the car, in front of your child. They, they feed off that. Remember, it's about your son or daughter learning teamwork, competition, perseverance, and life skills. Transportation. Um, we provide transportation to and from athletic events. Um, there's really not a real good reason not to take the bus. Uh, this year, we will be masked uh, once we start traveling to and from. Um, there are extenuating circumstances. Please discuss uh, with the coach and or activities director and myself. Um, beforehand if you need to um, take your son or daughter afterwards. We will sign them out. Uniforms and equipment, uh, I think we have some good stuff. Uh, treat it well, take care of it. Uh, Jaguar Pride is what I call it. Uh, follow directions for washing uh, and drying. Uh, kids, parents, make sure you lock your stuff up at school, whether it's in your school locker or if you end up having an athletic locker. Lock your stuff up. Last time I checked, um, stuff doesn't get stolen out of locked lockers. If you leave your cell phone plugged in and available and your wallet and your purse available for kids to take in a locker room, chances are it may be taken. Those six, seven, eight hundred dollar cell phones, they're worth six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Lock them up when you're at practice. Parents, get involved. We have a Jaguar Backer Booster Club. Uh, we have an AMPA club, um, uh, Music Parents Association, or Jaguar Backers Booster Club supports all our teams, all our athletics, all our activities. Uh, over the last 10 years, has given back to our, our teams and programs and activities over $500,000. But it takes parents to get involved. 
to make our Jaguar backers uh, uh, to, to work. So we're always looking for fresh people, new people, freshman parents. Um, check the newsletter. It'll be a little different this year with time and location, um, but please get involved. Fundraising, it's part of high school yet. Uh, it's not over. Um, there's an opportunity to get gas cards uh, from Titletown Grand Central Station. Uh, it's a donation from the company. That is not your money. Uh, when you buy $100 worth of gas, Grand uh, Central Station donates $10 back to the program of your choice, 10%. The money stays within that program. Some programs um, will identify uh, who's raising the money, and it might be to offset a trip or to some apparel. But really, it's the program's money. Uh, in a normal year, there's Packers giveaways. Uh, in a normal year, uh, there's a taste of a Schwabenon. Hopefully, we're able to have that uh, in the spring uh, this March. Here's my contact information. Uh, again, I wish all our kids well. I wish uh, our parents well as we uh, um, enter this uh, new normal. Um, but pride, tradition, and excellence are, are what we strive for or what we push for. Uh, meeting that mission of uh, pushing our kids uh, to get to their full potential. Parents, if you have questions for me, please don't hesitate. Um, give me a call. Come talk to me. Um, uh, email me. But again, we're all Jaguars. We're in this together. We're stronger together. I'm looking forward to the year. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting back to some new normal uh, with some athletics. There'll be opportunities this fall for open gyms. Uh, speed and strength will continue. Um, but it will look a little bit different. Uh, I know that we uh, we want to balance the health and safety of our kids um, with the benefits of all the co-curriculars. So with that, uh, good luck to all of us uh, in, in our Jaguar programs as we get into this uh, school year.